welcome to a new old computer stream. I hope that uh, you can see this. All right. Brendan, are you on there? This is the first time I, uh, I use the scheduling facility with YouTube. I scheduled the uh, stream right here in OBS and it seemed to create the uh, the event on the stream on YouTube and it had a start date and everything, a start time and date. So um, yeah, hopefully this uh, works. <clears throat> so anyways, um, thank you for watching, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I, uh, I think I mentioned this in the past, the concept for this, uh, this channel is uh, just to, to share the various uh, projects that I do. Uh, I, I got into the whole um, retro computing hobby a few years back, um, being a retro person, I guess, myself, uh, who grew up in the 80s and 90s, and uh, just revisiting the old computers and picking up some basic electronic skills, soldering skills. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a total amateur. No education in this field, no professional experience. I just I'm just learning from the com community. Um, oh, actually, I should uh, turn on my little clip-on microphone. I don't know how well this <clears throat> helps. This is a very cheap microphone, um, but I think it's um, it brings. I think the audio recording closer to my my person, to my face. Um, without it, the, the recording is happening through the webcam, typically. Um, and uh, I've had problems. I think the, I noticed in, in uh, after the fact, I, I uploaded a video on uh, uh, servicing a uh, Sony floppy drive the other day and um, I think I, I forgot to turn on my microphone at that point. And the moment I started doing some work over on the bench here, um, the uh, my, my voice was not captured very well. It was uh, pretty quiet. So that was, uh, that was a lesson learned as far as uh, audio recording goes. I think as, as long as I'm speaking into into the webcam that's recording, it's uh, it's all right. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna check. Let me check um, what I learned in so I'm using Windows 10. Still, um, there is this <clears throat> sound control panel, whatever it's called. Uh, there has a little test your microphone widget here. And uh, if you go to manage sound device, no, it's not here. I forgot. App volume. Oh, here we go. So app volume and device preferences. Um, so here you can set the default inputs and outputs um, for your uh, system. And uh, so yeah, right now it's actually set to. Oh, oh the uh, the system setting is uh, the Logitech Brio uh, webcam. But for OBS, I've hard coded it to. Uh, USB audio 1.0, which is which are these clip-on microphones that that the, the receiver for those microphones. So I think as long as this let's switch that on again, so that should uh, okay. I think that yeah, I, um, I can see a lot more uh, um, decibels coming through in the mixer now. I should probably reduce the volume a little bit because it's going into the yellow. And let me know if my voice is too loud. So anyways, um, the topic for today is to uh, try and uh, hack the Macintosh ROM. <laughs> um, this is a follow-up on a, on a previous video. I should probably uh, let me just tell you exactly what which video this is a follow-up from. Um, yeah, it's uh, 
I think it is the Blue Scassi V2 troubleshooting. Um, let me just check. Let's view my own video here. Turn off the audio. precarious maybe it wasn't this one it may have been the one after Yeah, I think it's this one here. I'm uh, I'm messing around with the uh, the micron board. Color setting, I think. Plus. That's better. Sad map or the sad chime with uh, the micron part though. Mm -hmm. For connection in the uh, oh. yep, this this was the video. So yeah, to recap, let's let's scroll to that point. So I had um, you know finished finished my work I thought on this uh, this Mac. Put everything back together. Put the micron card in. This was featured very early on. Connected it up. There it is. <laughs> so that was what was that. That's what we were seeing um, in the configuration I had at the time. Plugging this micron board into the SC30 uh, calls the sad Mac chime, and we narrowed down the problem to the uh, the hacked 32-bit clean ROM that we had put on this uh, uh, ROM sim. And uh, once we switched back to the uh, stock ROM, uh, everything was uh, was perfectly fine. And um, uh, it was a bit of a mystery to time why, why, why that was. Uh, I did ask uh, around in the Tinker Different community, heard if people knew, uh, had an experience with um, custom ROMs together with Micron boards over there, because uh, folks have been tinkering with um, those configurations. And I did speak to Boy, the um, uh, very talented engineer and a contributor who made, who has made a lot of, um, of the uh, reproduction boards that we've seen, like the Performer and the SC30 Reloaded, etc. And um, what he suggested uh, from, from his experience, um, these Micron boards, um, they have ROM checksum checks. They, they, they try to detect what kind of Mac they're running on. Uh, in their own ROM, you know, um, this is um, pretty sure that the ROM on the micron board sits right here, this PLCC32 chip right there. Um, and so that the micron board, yeah, may be trying to detect what Mac it's running on. And uh, I, when I bought this Maxim, Maxim, 
um, the seller said that um, the ROM on these had a bunch of different hacks, including one that disabled the checksum altogether. So yeah, the running theory right now is that um, the Micron board's ROM is trying to validate the checksum on the uh, the SC30's ROM, and when the checksum returns unexpected results, uh, it bails out. It says, nope, I don't know what kind of Mac this is, I'm not gonna run here. So, <laughs> we may need to um, hack our own ROM, uh, which is um, perfectly doable. Um, very, it's not like I'm, you know, full, full, <laughs> full disclosure. I, I, I don't have enough uh, know-how about 68k assembly uh, or, you know, um, reverse engineering or, or what's called decompiling of um, um, binary code into um, uh, assembly commands. I don't even know too much about. Uh, you know, CPU codes and things like that. Uh, so yeah, my, my knowledge is cursory. I'm relying on some online resources that I'll um, share in a moment. <clears throat> but yeah, so I think we should um, start out by validating the current state of things. Make sure that this uh, C30 is uh, still booting, or not booting, rather. It's been sitting around for two weeks, poor thing. Gathering dust. Um, so, yeah, first of all, let's uh, check that it uh, chimes when I have the, the good ROM in, and that it gets uh, the sad chime when the um, Packed ROM is in. Um, I'm gonna try. Uh, I have a different camera set up over here. Oh, let's see if I can get some um, image. So, I don't know, I'm not getting anything, maybe I need to uh, deactivate and activate it, oh there we go, alright, so yeah, there's uh, my other camera, so I'm hoping that this, this will provide a much clearer picture with better focus, okay, that's not good focus. <laughs> um, and I think my capture, yeah, so I have um, a cheapo capture device set up to capture this feed from the camera. Wow, come on, what are you doing? And that capture device has a bit of latency, so you may see uh, latency between um, voice and picture. Jeez, what's it doing? Maybe uh, hmm. maybe I'll switch over to manual focus. Yeah, let's do manual focus. So let's see if we can. I'm gonna make it focus on the desk area. Maybe like that. I'm gonna check. Look, look at the screen over here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. Yes, yeah, so I'll use this this shot here when I'm um, working on something large here. 
And this this camera is the uh, bench camera, or the top down bench camera. Anyways, so uh, let's uh, test this computer. With the micro board. We have the uh, 128 megs of RAM. Um, so the, uh, the RAM test will take a long time. Actually, maybe we can. Uh, It's a bit precarious, but it is what it is. All right, let's turn this on. Or let's check, make sure that nothing is shorting out. No, it seems okay. Uh, and I don't have speakers hooked up, so I'm just gonna listen. Uh, I have the headphones, and the headphone jack here, so I'll just tell you if uh, like it's chiming or not. China. And we have a picture, we have a mouse. I think that's a mouse pointer. Um, I think that's uh, adequate. I'm not gonna sit around and wait for the, um, the memory tests. Because 120, this, this is one of the big reasons. For, oh, actually, that was pretty fast. So, um, yeah, that was faster than I expected. Anyways, let's put in the uh, hacked ROM. Which is really hard with the micron board. Okay. installed. Turn it on. Interesting. We got a Simasimac. I, I may have switched out to a different ROM in there when I make, pe poked around with it since last time. Um, but anyways, we, we know that it doesn't work. <laughs> Um, so step one, let's uh, get the uh, maxing to a uh, func functioning state. Let's get a um, good ROM on the, onto there, just to, to make sure that we can um, uh, we can use that setup. <clears throat> so um, the neat thing about the maxim is that um, it has uh, it just has four PLCC sockets. And you can um, just pop these ROM chips out and um, get a, a programmer to program the chips and then get put, put them back in. Um, I can find my tool. Here's my tool. So this is the Chipix uh, PLCC extractor tool, and uh, rather, uh, yeah, maybe maybe we should uh, prepare the the ROM images first. Yeah, let's prepare the ROM Im images first. <clears throat> So 
So here is um, a collection of Old World Macrons. I think I got this collection off of uh, archive.org a long time ago. And uh, it, it just contains all of the known, uh, uh, known recorded Macrons, the Old World Macrons, meaning those that were using the traditional bootloader. Um, I think the mat, the SE30, the SE, yeah, the SE30 is that 512K, uh, or is, let's see, I can never find them. What's it in here? SEFPHD, is it one make? <clears throat> yeah, I forgot we're um, Mac Two. You can see Mac Two, two X Two Two CX. It's not 128k. That's the Mac Plus. Yeah, I forgot it. It slipped, slipped my mind. I think it's um. I think the Mac SE30 ROM is um. It's very similar to the, the 2CX ROM. If not the same. Uh, but to cheat, uh, I, I have um, I have a collection of ROMs here, um, and for one, I have this um, stock collection of stock SC30 ROMs. Um, well, it's guess it's kind of cheating because they're they're already um, split. So yeah, uh, of course, worth mentioning that you saw that the uh, the Maxim has um, four ROM chips, and yes, you need to. Uh, split a, uh, a ROM dump into four pieces to um, uh, write them onto the um, write them onto the four chips. So yeah let's, let's start with the easy um, easy thing. So yeah I, ha I have um, for one I have the stock ROM split into four pieces. I have the bit swapped one that's uh, used for an earlier revision of the um, the SC30 reloaded board. I don't think we, we're gonna need that. Um, and then I also have the uh, no mem check uh, version of the 2SI ROM. So yeah. Uh, So let's start start out with a known good um, so, um, ROM images uh, because uh, step one I want to um, rather than uh, re reuse these I did buy new um, ROM chips off eBay I think somewhere <clears throat> so I'm gonna you know kind of test that the <laughs> These work. It's like a sign test of these chips. I'm gonna turn off this camera for a bit because it's draining battery. So we uh, open this up. Like that. And here is. The chips in factory packaging. I'm hoping that these are good. Let's pop one of these out and look look at it under the microscope. I 
and get it up. Yep, so these are STM29F040 made in Singapore. One twenty K six five eight eight XW nine nine two two. So I assume the last is date code, so nine nineteen ninety nine, week twenty two. So let's uh have just gonna do a quick googling on these chips. I don't remember exactly the specs. M twenty nine F O four O. I hope, by the way, I should mention uh, I did call this stream chill stream. Um, I'm not turning on any chill music this time. I, uh, um, so far, after using, uh, you know, ch chill music slash elevator music in uh, the last few streams and videos, I, I only got uh, constructive feedback, as it were, um, folks who were not too thrilled about that kind of... Uh, music and nobody who uh, expressed that they loved it so um, I'm think I'm, I'm gonna stop streaming music unless I found I mean I was basically just streaming what I what I thought was pretty relaxing music but it's it's also pretty um, un, un, unexciting so maybe if I find a Musician that I really love, um, who would allow me to stream their mu their music, you know, music that I I can get behind, and I'll I'll stream that music. But yeah, until then I'm um, not doing that. So data sheet for M29F040. It's a four megabit, meaning five twelve K by eight. So is that eight bits? Five twelve K by eight bits. So if you need thirty two bit addressing. You need four of these chips for 512k, is how I read that. But yeah, I'm not that uh, proficient in reading memory yet. But anyways, that's how I read it. So I think, yeah, four of these chips uh, gives you 512k. Which should line up with... Uh, what what we need for the uh, the two so yeah yeah we're still gonna use two si the two si rom as as baseline um so the hacked two si rom should fit right on here and uh, and yeah I, I know from previous so again I still I don't have the labeled se thirty rom in my collection here I do th I still think it's this one. Um, 2x to cx ROM, but yeah, I, uh, I've read in the past that yeah the well actually we can see it from uh, uh, yeah 
yeah, 64 times 4, right? Um, 512k. No, sorry, 256k. So yeah, but both the uh, SC, the stock SC ROM and the 2, 2SI ROM should should fit on, on these chips perfectly fine. So let's um, let's switch over to the bench view for a bit. Oops, a little bit tight here. Move this to the side. So yeah, we uh. We need four of these ROM chips, like so. We put the other ones away to our stock stockpile. And uh, to do this uh, reading and writing of ROM chips, I have this uh, XGECRU HS model. Um, oh, it's an XGECRU Pro USB 2.0 HS 480 MHz model T48. I'm uh, out of view. I think I need to. Let's, I'm going to move the, this camera over here again. Um, Model T48, made by Haiko Shingong Electronics uh, in China. And uh, yeah, this has been a. It came recommended by the community, and uh, I've been happy with it so far. So yeah, of course, this is a DIN um, zip, zip socket, a DIN socket. So this, you can fit DIN chips, a uh, dip. Dip, sorry. Din is something else. Uh, the dip, dip packets go in here by default, but um, XGECU uh, sold this um, kit. From, uh, this, we have this clip on adapter here. We have a bunch of uh, dip to uh, PLCC. Adapters, which are super handy. This is a different kind down here. This is also for, I think, different kind of PLCC pack package. And then one more. This is like a S S O P sixteen adapter S O P eight adapter super handy. So today uh, we're gonna of course be writing PLCC thirty two chips, and this is a uh, this is by the way um pro tip <laughs> because um. I uh, made this mistake when I first started using this programmer, and I uh, even filed a complaint um, with the uh, XGECU, and uh, um, turned out that there are two PLCC32 adapters that come with them uh, uh, in this kit. One of them is um, uh, a PLC32 to Deep 28 adapter for um, chips that are wired in. Uh, in a very particular way, and it says for a 60, a 27C64 and 27CC512. I'm not sure what kind of chips those are, but um, that's what they are. So yeah, um, these will not uh, route the uh, signals correctly from the PLCC uh, package to the uh, to the dip. So we're gonna be we're gonna use this PLCC thirty two to deep thirty two adapter. Yeah, not, 
not getting great focus. Anyways, take my word for it. So let's um No, I just need I <laughs> it's funny I uh, always forget what the software for this programmer is called install it yet yeah I don't think I've used this programmer since I changed computers let's go to the Xgeku website and this is our T48 is what we have the programmer application this <laughs> they serve the media fire it's cute XG it's called XG Pro I remember now oh this is a pretty new release it's only um, it's less than two months Old. Let's install the software. Uh, okay, I should have paid attention. <laughs> It says destination folder DXG Pro. It's just in, um, let's put it in a, some more reasonable location. Shall we trust Haiko Shingong Electronic Corporation Limited? Uh, Chinese says something like Beijing Heaven. I can't really read the other. Safety something something company. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we should have the XG Pro software now. Uh, what? Installation director does not have write permission. That is, okay. Uh, <laughs> that is super awkward. Um, so what's security? The read only. That's so weird. Nope. <laughs> what the heck? All right, let's remove this and then I'm gonna install this this in a different location. Put it in um, retro. It's cheaper. Okay. 
So yep, there it has <laughs> better access um, there. Jeez, what is this? Car deals near you. Yikes. That's media fire, I guess. I threw that. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, so now our um, programmer has its software. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go back to the computer. I'm gonna minimize everything like so. <clears throat> so yeah, so how um, another uh, this is a, another pro tip if you're um, ever using this programmer. Um, the standard way of operation is that basically you have to uh, locate your your IC. Um, that you need to uh, program, and we know that this is the M twenty nine F O twenty. Can we just copy that in here? No. We just copy that. We search. So we know that it's an ST device, and M twenty nine F O forty B. PLCC32 is what we need to choose. And then when we um, do the, uh, for instance, we do the read, the software here will very helpfully tell you how to use the adapter. But this was something that uh, I learned the hard way. Let's see where it is. All right, just a moment. So yeah, we need to place this in the exact same way that the uh, that page was uh, showing. So yeah, pin one should uh, point towards the. Should uh, pin one should be at the uh, um, very top left, so the opposite corner from the lever. And uh, yeah, it says pin one there. And uh, if you, uh, it's probably not very visible in the camera, but there's a little one right there on that pin. So the very opposite of the lever. So pin one is up here. So this should uh, drop in just in this fashion. And then you put the lever down. And uh, this should be the correct installation of this, um, uh, this adapter. And then, of course, uh, the chip needs to go in the right way. And uh, these PLCC chips have little dots. It sits right there, the dots. The dots should uh, also face pin one, right? Um, there's also a little cutoff on the edge here, which um, lines up with a, a little notch on the, the socket. So yeah, it should go in like this. And that's uh, that should be ready to be programmed. So yeah, we can read it first, see what happens. Pin detect passed. It's okay, reading the flash, reading protection, read finished, and uh, they're just Fs across the whole um, the whole chip, so that's great. Um, USB power voltage 5 watt, but 05 volts, USB speed mode, USB 2.0, yeah. So um, let's uh, just write the correct images so yeah we're gonna be using the stock SE30 images first so start with U1 let's load uh, file name quick 
we can keep all the default settings and then we uh, do a, a program and quick program it's a racing first now it's writing succeeded verifying succeeded programming succeeded great so that's our chip number one and now this is where we use our PLCC extraction tool the chip right out. So we just, we'll just put line them up in order over here. So let's uh, just write them all one by one. Load U2, OK, and then I'm just going to read it first, make sure that we can access this chip, yes, it's red, yeah, it's all Fs, and, uh, oh yeah, sorry, we need to load this again, uh, so yeah, this is the binary data we need to write, program, program, Verifying succeeded. Perfect. So I'm just gonna do this quickly. I'm, I'm popping this this one out. I'll put it next to order. Pop the third chip in. Uh, actually, let's yeah, let's read it first to make sure we can read the chip. <clears throat> read is successful, we got all F's, that's perfect, we load U3, okay, program, program, succeeded, great, popping that up, out, putting it next to the other two, and then fourth chip goes in. Let's read the chip. All Fs, as expected. Uh, let's get U4. Program that. Perfect. All right. I think we are ready for the next stage. So we can um, pop the final chip out of its socket. And I have them sitting over on the side here. I'm going to put the programmer away for now. Then we have the Maxim. So yeah, I can show in the microscope perhaps. So yeah, we have U1 here, U1, 2, uh, sorry, U2, U3, and uh, U4. So we just need to remove those chips and then pop the um, programmed ones in. Put it over here. So yeah, let's, let's just pop all four out. And then uh, these are the chips we need to put in, in that order, from 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And yeah, you need, you need to have the right ROM image in the right spot, so that the code makes sense to the computer. There we go. And uh, I'm going to pop... Uh, let's, let's see here.
pop that in here. Let's uh, turn on the computer and uh, hopefully it will, uh, it will boot. Maybe we can flip it over like so. So you can see. I'm gonna listen for the listen for the chime. Okay, that was a happy chime. And we have a screen. But that's not Sima Simac screen. And we have a mouse pointer. So yeah, I think that's a uh, a good ROM. <clears throat> So yeah, um, now we have a baseline. <laughs> it took me 50 minutes to get to the baseline. Oh, and here is the uh, flashing disk. Let's take the chip out. Let's just use a tool. There we go. So yeah, the main uh, main act today is to figure out how to hack this, uh, hack the two SI ROM in a way that uh, works for my requirements, and. Uh, uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's start here. This is uh, GG Labs. This is the uh, origin of the Maxim that I'm using. Uh, let me just uh, walk through this um, description here. It has a bit of instructions. So yeah, this was uh, <clears throat> released 2017. This is a um, text talks a little bit about the Mac SE30. It was the fastest compact black and white computer, a Macintosh computer. Um, it had a 60 megahertz, 68 or 30 with an FPU and 32 bit memory interface. Could do up, up to 128 megs of RAM. But yeah, it unfortunately, used uh, the ROM contained um, some old code that used 24 bit addressing, and that's why uh, uh, the ROM is called 32 bit dirty. Excuse me. And uh, what that means is that. Um, it can uh, address only, uh, I think, what, it, what is it, 10 megabytes uh, out of the box, and then you can uh, use. Um, okay, I'm blanking on uh, uh, mode 32. I think it's called an extension called mode mode 32 to uh, address more memory. Um, so yeah, uh, classic Mac computer enthusiasts have made. Their Mac is 32 bit clean by installing a Mac 2 SI ROM, but those are quite rare and difficult to find. Uh, and I showed you in the back, I have one of those, but it's it's dead, fortunately. Um, so, yeah, the Maxim is a um, flash based replacement, um, which is what I'm using. Oh, yeah, the, by default, the limit is 8 megabytes. Yeah, 8 megabyte and addressing. And there, okay, mode 32 there talks about it. Also, Mac OS support is limited. Um, so the new design is a full SMT design. The PCB size has been reduced to improve the fit in the case. And the four flash ROMs are wired to the pins on the SIM connector. A few decoupling caps exist. We've seen those. Um, <clears throat> uh, So yeah, here's the, here's the meat of the information that we need. Um, the four flash ROMs can be programmed individually using any EEPROM programmer. We, yeah, we did that. Um, so the ROM file must be split into four sections, where U5, uh, U4, <laughs> U5, U4 is byte 048, U3 is byte 159, U2 is byte 2610, and U1 is byte 3711. Um, so they, they're they're staggered, right? They they read one bit um, a time at a time from each uh, each chip. So um, if your system has the S record package in installed, you can use the S record cats 
command to create these um, split images. So what I want to do next is try make sure that we can actually do this this operation. So let's take uh, let's take the two is the, the the stock two si rom and see if we can generate this. So for that purpose, I have um, I do have the Windows subsystem for Linux on this machine. I mean, <laughs> it would have been nicer perhaps to have a a real Linux machine to do this, but uh, this is a a decent substitute. So. I guess I should have read up where where does um, Windows subsystem a Linux subsystem for Windows um, store its home directory? I'm not sure. Let's Google it. Data packages canonical group limited. So it's in app data here, maybe. Um, I don't know. Packages. Explore.exe dots. Really? Oh, there we go. Okay. Interesting. So it sits in network WSL localhost Ubuntu home DMARC. Uh, interesting. So it's treated as a network volume, like an emulated virtual network. Um, volume. Pretty cool. So let's grab um, 2SI ROM. Okay, let's just drop it right over here. Yep, that worked. So now we have the ROM image here. And I think I, um, I'm pretty sure I installed <clears throat> the requisite package some time ago. Oops. Rec cat Yep. I get the version. No. No. Oh. Here we go. Version 1.64.d001 of SREC CAT. Yeah, so let's uh, try these commands. SREC CAT and then um, it's called 1990 2SI something something. Binary split. Four O dash O two SI two SI stock four binary. Okay. That gave us a binary image. So let's do the others.
I think that's the only difference. You split split into four and then you choose the segment piece, right? So we had uh, piece zero first and then piece one and then piece two. And piece three. Okay, so that should give us our four pieces. There they are. Let's bring that into I see thirty hacked ROMs. Yes, that's fine. Alright. Um so yeah, they're hundred and twenty-eight K each. And uh, let's uh write those. Yeah, so let's do that on the computer screen. Um, yeah, so the idea again, I'm 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 uh, giving myself a uh, a baseline so that yeah, I, I want to make sure that whatever ROM that I generate um, with this method is going to work. So yeah, step one is to see if uh, we can create a split. Um, oops. Split from image. That works. Okay, so popping that into the Uh, we loaded it, right? Yeah, we loaded it. Okay. I'm going to program it right away. Yeah. Okay, maybe this time we can do it in a view like this. Programming succeeded. Take this out, put this into slot one. Let's take out the next one. Like so. We load this next one, we program it. It's done. Popping it out again. Into the maxim. Take out U3. The third one, program it. Succeed, verifying succeed. Thank you. Last one in U four program program succeeded. All right, that gives us a uh, 
hopefully what's going to be a functional stock 2SI <laughs> ROM sim. Let's see how, what our Mac SE30 thinks about that. And it went. I think it's in there. Gonna listen for uh, for the chime. Yep, that was a happy chime. But we're getting a CMAS Mac actually. So um, interesting. That complicates things because if we don't have a good baseline, um, we can't really uh, hack it and expect things to work. Let's uh, let's try without the micron board to see if that's that makes a difference. Take that out. Still happy, oh, happy Mac. Yeah, but still um, see messy Mac. That's not good. <laughs> hmm. Roadblock. Let's make sure it's the ROM sim is in there all right. Nope. Hmm. Yeah, from what I know, a 2SI ROM should work out of the box. Um in, a, in an SC30, but it doesn't. That maybe that means that the um, the SC30 ROM sim that I have actually works. It came out of a SC30 that worked briefly and then broke down, and I couldn't fix it. So I, I always assumed that the um, the ROM sim wasn't working, and I then I tried the ROM sim in other in, in SC30s, and it never worked. So. Perhaps the assertion that a stock unmodified SC30 ROM does not uh, works in an S uh, uh, 2SI ROM works in SC30. Maybe that's incorrect. Um, interesting. Let's. Um, <clears throat> it's a bit tedious, but um, I think it's worth. Testing one of the other ROMs that I had there. Mm. Uh, actually, we can have a quick look at. No checksums. Okay, so this is another res pretty nifty resource. This is <clears throat> an old page captured from the Wayback Machine. And it talks a bit about uh, the, the different ROM checksums with characteristics for the different Macs. And uh, we have the SC30 right here. So yeah, my theory was correct that the 2X and the 2CX ROM are the same as the Mac SC30 ROM. Um, it has this checksum, it's 256k large, supports system 603 to 755. So yeah, we can try, um, let's see what happens if we split the 2x ROM, because yeah, I just want to make sure that my process is correct. So yeah, let's take this from here and um, Split it. So yeah, same process as before. Uh, so yeah, we go here. So S rec cat. Uh, what was it? Nineteen eighty-eight and. You want to do binary mode, split, uh, 
into four pieces, p0, output to x, let's call it stock u4, binary mode. u3, u2. This can now. Uh, this can easily be scripted. I can do a simple bash script. Oh, actually, yeah, maybe I'll cook up a bash script later, just to save a, save a couple of seconds. Um, so here's our 2x stock. Let's drop that onto here. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So let's program uh, let's put the micron board away a bit. For, for a bit. So yeah, let's uh, do this process all over again. Chip number one. Let's check out you one. Mm. Going into XG Pro again. U1. Let's program it. Succeeded. I think um, I think I read somewhere that the designer of the Maxim actually made like a programming harness for the sim itself, so you can just program it, program the four chips in one batch without taking them out of the sim, which would be handy, of course. But after this, I'm definitely gonna fish out my. Um, original 2SI ROM again from my bin of what I thought what I think are bad bad boards, bad parts and uh, put it in put it away again or put it in a I mean, more respectful mode of storage because it may actually work if one day I run into a 2SI that needs a Rounds him. <clears throat> Okie doke. Let's just check um, you we were we were at U3. We're not getting to any hacking. <laughs> We're still just establishing baseline here. Hopefully, we'll, we'll be able to get to hacking. <clears throat> Succeed. Okay, so now we have our Maxim programmed with the Mac 2X ROM. Let's see if uh, this computer is happier now. So it chimes. And we have a gray screen. Um, so yeah. That works perfectly. Huh? Hi Zenosite, welcome to the party. So we have a we have established the baseline. That's great. So now we know that uh, we are able to um, split and write uh, the um, uh, arbitrary ROM code uh, from our PC to uh, to the Mac, basically. So yeah, we have a flashing question mark there. So 
Uh, yeah, Xenocide, you have perfect timing. <laughs> I spent an hour, 15 minutes to establish ba a baseline that I have a process that works. So now let's get to hacking. Let's get to hacking. So again, I'm just going to be uh, <clears throat> basically following instructions <laughs> is the idea. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, so about hacking, it talks about um, the memory test. Uh, if, we have, if you have more than 16 to 32 megs of RAM in a Mac, classic Mac, it takes a long time to do cold startup. It can take over a minute. Uh, so people have developed patches to get rid of that. And then people have uh, uh, increased the flash memory size to add ROM disks and stuff like that. Um, so um, what I have, I think we established earlier, is um, five, uh, 512 um, kilobytes at eight, 8 bytes wide. So to get 32-bit addressing, we need all those four chips to get 512, uh, 512K. So I don't think we can fit um, a uh, ROM disk onto them. Um, this is what this page talks about her, here. I think this is the original project, the B Brown, um, who created the original uh, ROM boot disk. And I think they are a little bit larger than 512K. Um, I have them sitting around, yeah. So yeah, it, when we add the image, uh, it's it's two megabytes, right? So we need much larger, much more um, space. We need larger ROM chips to do that hack. Maybe I should have ordered larger ROM chips. I'm pretty sure that the Maxim can support it. Um, but maybe for a different project. <clears throat> oh yeah, actually here is uh, they talk about the uh, the ROM sim programmer. You can. Uh, Maybe worth reading up on. Uh, and then, yeah, so 32-bit clean ROMs. Um, you can also get uh, support for the HT20 if you if you do this hack. Oops. So, so this is dead sites. So yeah. archive.org is your friend. Let's see if we can... Was this alive? Yeah, here we go. It was alive in uh, 2012. Yeah, so this just talks about the steps to inst how to hack the operating system to uh, to get system uh, OS 7, 6, 7, 6, 8 or 8.0 or 8.1 to run on a uh, SC30. You don't need to do that right now. Anyways, so this is um, this is a handy page. Uh, yeah, so they they do talk about the um, image stuff. There's some change history here. Um, but what I'm interested about is the technical description and the uh, specific hacks down here. So let's uh, read through this. Um, it says the 2SI ROM was cho cho chosen as the basis of this modification mainly because it has usable space. The 2X ROM, which is what we were just using, just using, uh, is at 256 kilobytes and fairly dense. The 2SI ROM is 512K and has unused drivers, extra padding all over the place which makes it easy to add code. The 2SI ROM also, is also frequently used by 2X and SE30 owners to get a 32-bit clean ROM and not need mode 32. There are at least two completely unused drivers in the 2SI ROM, .netboot and .atboot. These drivers appear intended to implement booting over Apple Talk, but are disabled in the shipping image. They are flagged as disabled to the resource manager and therefore cannot be loaded through normal means. Specifically, the resource header in the 2SI ROM looks like this for the .sony floppy driver. 
Um, yeah, so there's the code for the driver, Sony, Sony D. <clears throat> First byte there is flags on the resource starting at byte 8. It's the 32 bit location of the next resource. So, what is that? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This one, 2e. Uh, starting at byte 16 is the 4 chart type code. Um, okay, so this is byte. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's over here, of course. Um, So, okay, th this is the 32-bit location of the next resource. And then starting at byte 16 over here is the four chart type code DRVR, driver. Starting at byte 20, uh, is the 16-bit resource ID 4. Starting at byte 23 is the Pascal string name of the resource. So where are, where are we then? So um, 8, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so uh, oh yeah, so that's the 16-bit uh, resource ID. This part here. And then by 23, 2021, 22, 23. Uh, from here, Pascal string name. Oh, that's the Sony D. Um, the last two bytes listed here are the size of the resource. One eight four. This one. Here is how the netboot driver resource. Here's the netboot driver decide resource header. Flags are different. This one never loads. Changing those flags from eighteen to seven eight causes the driver to be loaded. Cool. So overwriting the net.net boot driver is pretty straightforward and it can now be loaded. This allows a vector that doesn't reduce stock function functionality. However, once the driver is loaded, a non-SCSI non-slot based disk isn't recognized by the startup control, control panel. PRAM boot values don't know how to deal with this either. So making it bootable is the next step. Okay, so just talks about how to inject the um, disk driver for booting a ROM disk. I'm not super interested in booting ROM disks right now, so I think we can uh, skip over what they did here. Next section talks about 24-bit versus 32-bit access. Enabling the full 1.5 megs available, available ROM space for the disk image was not a chore. There are a couple of challenges. To start with the ROM image, this 24-bit mode is only mapped from this address to this address, or 1 megabyte. So accessing the ROM in 24-bit mode will always be limited to the first one megabyte. So they can only get a 512k disk image. And blah, 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 blah. So we need to load this in 32-bit mode. 24-bit pointer. Just switch to 32-bit mode. Executing will crash. Okay, we don't need this either, I think. Okay, RAM test. When the system cold boots, first powers on, it performs the memory tests. Uh, yes, we don't know about this. <clears throat> there are two memory test functions located at 467EO and 468F8, uh, the 2SI ROM. Both functions return via jump A6. To disable the, disable the memory tests, I've overwritten the start of these functions with opcode for e d6, which is jump a6. Ah, uh, all right, yeah, so, got it. So the this uh, operation, this CPU operation will just jump to a different address location, right? Address, address six, yeah. Mm. So let's try and do that hack. That's what we should do. Let's I'm gonna open just another explorer. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, but, but it's, it's weird. I, I'm a, not sure why we can't get the vanilla to Cyrom to uh, to boot though. That's frustrating. So let's see what happens. Let's call this to Cyhack. Uh, forgot for that. Exeditor. Which exedit? Hexinator. I had a I had a good hex editor on. Um, my other PC. I think I was using HexEdit. Is this a Mac? Oh, it's Windows too. Okay. Anyone who has a recommendation for a good hex editor for Windows, let me know. If, the, if we can't find a good one right now, oh, this is okay. This is just a code. What? But yeah, this is annoying. Is this a Mac only application. It said, um, oh, okay, it is Mac only. Sorry, XD. English, please. Oh, there's English. I don't know if this, this is a good hex editor. So here is a ROM file. It looks solid. Yeah, we have some strings here, copyright Apple computer. So that's promising. Let's um, look up let's look up those locations they were talking about here just to see if we can uh, find them. So for instance, can you find this? Yep, there it is. The Sony floppy driver. Cool. The netboot driver too. Nope. Interesting. Hmm. 
Oh, okay, it was just he was searching downwards on, uh, only. Oh, so there's the net boots. Oh, interesting. Oh, net boots shows up four times. Cool. There's the driver. There's a net boot driver. Okay. Anyway, so now that it's looking similar. Um, okay, so let's find these. So this is the uh, this is the offset, I guess. Four seven uh, four six seven e e o. Four, six, seven, e o. So I think this is the this is the location they're talking about. So I'm just, I'm just not just not sure what is the uh, start of these functions. Is it um, is this the start of these functions? The other one is four six eight f eight. Four six eight F eight. Right. So it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I think it's right here. Okay, so yeah, I think what we need to do is to replace this F C F A with four E D six. E D six. Four E D six. The other one. down here no four six eight f eight it's down here okay these two four e d six four e d six So that's the hack that should disable the run tests. Right. Uh, the next check is the next hack is ROM checksum. The first four bytes of the ROM contains a checksum of the entire image. It's advantageous for advantageous for us to disable the checksum validation for a couple of reasons. It makes development easier makes it easier for people to make their own changes. And some Daystar accelerators key off the ROM checksum, 
to alter their behavior. Being able to set the ROM checksum to arbitrary values to alter the behavior of these peripherals can be useful. Yes, that is, that's exactly what we're trying to get at with the, um, the micron board. Call to validate the checksum is here. <clears throat> so it offsets 4, 6, 4, D8, 4, 6, 4, D8, somewhere right here. Three E three C O O O one. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure I'm looking at the right four six four D eight four six four D A right here. No, here. Yeah, that's right, this code right here. 3E3C0001. Okay, yeah, we found the color. Um, so yeah, that is, uh, yeah, so they, they um, decompiled the assembly, so it moves to a location. Lee L load address of the next instruction into A6 to return us the, use the return vector. Jump to L497, which is the startup run test. And then this one is test L, test the return value. BNE error one handler, bad chimes. Okay. So yeah, I think this is this is the jump that we got, right, when the ROM test was failing, and then clear. Um, so replacing 464E2 through 464EB with uh, NOOP 4E71 disables both the call to check ROM and the test of the return results. So, yeah. This is what we maybe don't want to do. So again, I, I don't know exactly how the ROM that I got was hacked. Um, I asked the um, person who sold me the the, the sim, but they didn't respond. Uh, oops. Hey. Oh, excuse me. But we can definitely definitely try to just disable it and see what happens. Um, but then again, I think the micron board is is using that check. Um, anyway, just just for testing, let's see um, if we um, use now the hacked, meaning it's very lightly hacked. We just remove the. RAM test, probably. Will it work? Let's try it. Same deal. Speed boot to four. Piece number one. Uh, at least piece number zero is um, to assign RAM U4. Okay. Piece two, uh, and then piece three. Okay. 
let's go for some uh, fun ROM chip program again. Starting with U1. I guess there's an off chance that these chips are, I don't know, mislabeled? Fake ones that don't actually have 512 by 8 bytes um, storage. Maybe that's why it's not working. Maybe we can try. Uh, let me try. Uh, let's try and program the uh, chips that I got with this uh, with this maxim. You can never truly trust chips that you get from random eBay sellers. But I know these ones once housed fully functioning um, hacked SE2 SI ROM. Uh, where is my programmer app? XG Pro. Two side RAM, U1. Program. Oops. Bad pins found. I may not have put this correctly into the sockets. It was kind of off kilter. A little bit. Maybe that's better. Try what? Uh, weird. Let's try another. Let's try. No, can't. Pin detect error. Oh yeah, of course, because we're using different chips now. <laughs> Whoops. Good thing that this programmer does um, pin tests so we don't screw up uh, chips. So this is the SST39SF010. 39SF010. PLCC32 version, yes, please. Mm. Yeah. Fellow. Yeah. Welcome back to the, the, the world of the, uh, not living, but <laughs> the world of the awake. Let's program this. No data loaded, okay. Um, so yeah, to, just to demonstrate what I'm doing, uh, Brandon. So I have my X Geku programmer hooked up here with the um, PLCC32 um, adapter, and I have a browser. Uh, I have this XG Pro software where we load our uh, split ROM images like so. So we load in some data. Um, yeah, this was U1. And then we hit program. Succeeded. So that's chip number one. Just putting the next chip in here. And we load U2 program. Succeeded. We 
demonstrate the gun sum using this PLCC uh, remover removal tool to uh, get the chip out of the socket again. Bam. Put it into the Maxim. Put the next chip in. Head over to the programmer. Load U3. Program. Succeeded. Nano. Final chip. Succeeded. All right, our Maxim is back together, and now it should have the two SI. Wrong with the um, RAM test disables. I don't have high hopes for this because it didn't work before. And I'm not sure why, but it didn't. And listen for the chime in the headphones. Oops, we got immediate sad Mac chime and Simasi Mac on the screen. So that was uh, definitely a sad, <laughs> very unhappy ROM. So I think I, I need to go back to um, baseline again, since we've had uh, pretty cool how much capacity some of those chips. Um, that's a good question. So I did I did this while you were sleeping. Um, the, the chips that we used just before, I'll just show you the microscope. So this, this was the chips we were reducing just before. Um, these are, let's see, it's hard to, to get them to show up well there. These are STM29F040 chips. And uh, if we go to the data sheets, they are 512 kilobytes by eight. Uh, well, so I, I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm not a, an expert on, on this by any any means, but I think this means uh, you need four of these chips to get 32 bits addressing of 512 kilobytes. So yeah, those four chips make up 512k. And then the ones that uh, we had in the Maxim moments ago. Um, these are SST. 39SF010. Oh, so let's look them look them up quickly. SST 39S F101. Um, data sheet. Uh, so they are also 512 kilobits by 8. Although, thing here that is confusing to me, according to this data sheet, these chips are 4 megabit, but here these other ones are 1 megabit, but they are the f same 512 kilobit by 8. So I'm not sure how Kept the uh, the math is different there. So yeah, if uh, if an expert, uh, yeah, ki yeah, kilobits. Yeah, so five twelve kilo kilobit by eight is eight kilobits uh, or um, five twelve eight bit kilo. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. 
getting tired, so I'm not good at reasoning. <clears throat> See here. Lost my train of thoughts. But anyways, I was gonna re-establish my baseline by um, using the uh, uh, to this I know mem check. So I believe these four here, 2SI no mem check, um, this is what I dumped from the these chips when I got them first from the seller of this Maxim. So I do believe that if we flash them back on this uh, Maxim, we should have a working computer again, albeit one that doesn't like the Micron card. Let's do that. It's a bit tedious to do this every time, but <laughs> at least it's better than having to solder and desolder these chips. So yeah, I'm just in the XG Pro again here. I'm not going to show that. Again, I don't think that's super interesting. Um, program. Programming succeeded. To assign a name, check you two. Succeeded. Uh, yeah, so 8 bits is 1 byte, so 512k by 8 equals 512 kilobytes, and 4 8 bit chips should be 32 bits wide. Yeah, that, that was uh, what I was trying to get at as well. Succeeded. And then let's get to you four. Okie doke. Program. Yes, please. Okay. Let's see what our Mac says now. This should bring us back to the, the original state of this Mac scene before I started messing with it. Um, but yeah, listening in. Okay, so we got a happy Mac chime. We have a gray screen. So yeah, good. We didn't. But at least we have a base. We know we have a baseline there. Uh, total capacity on the series two meg. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I'm I'm not sure. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you're right. Um, we can uh, 
try your theory, we can definitely try that theory that we have actually uh, two megs. <clears throat> Because I do have, uh, oh, not that one. I have this 2SI ROM driver 0.9, uh, 0.9 no mem, no sum image um, hacked image here, which is two megs large, and this came, this comes from um, the website that I showed earlier. Uh, oh, not this, this one. Uh, the Mac 68K Mac ROM boot disk and I believe this is literally the code or I mean I don't know if this is exactly the code or a modified version that's used in the um, Rominator I got that right it's called Rominator I think I called it Romulator in a different episode um, so if uh, if we can get this image split and working, we actually there's even an eight megabyte version here, um, which is a which is system seven point Mac OS seven point five on a ROM, which is pretty cool. But I definitely don't we don't we definitely don't have eight megs of storage. Uh, you can also create your own 1.5 meg disk image in an emulator, which is pretty cool too. So let's get this over to our Linux subsystem for Windows file, file, file system. And uh, Run the same commands as before. To SI plus ROM driver, etc. Binary split four pieces. P zero is to SI ROM drive. U four. Double check. I think the first one should be um, yeah. Part number zero should be U four. Yeah, because because that's what they say. U three should be part number one. U two should be part number two. Uh, one should be part number three. Oops. So yeah, we have four, five, twelve kilobytes pieces. Let's program these. Show the XG Pro this time, and yeah, we need to switch back to the previous chip, which was the just copy paste from here. This one, it's a ST part. It's a PLC C32 package. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna pop in the first chip if I succeed. Oops. I'm not succeeding. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Let's program this. Oh, did I? No, did I load? No, I didn't load it up. Huh? Um, so let's start with U1.
in the meantime I'll pop out the the chips. Takes a lot longer to, to program, but it's succeeding. Okay, cool. So I guess that means that we, you're right, Brandon, that we have 512k storage on these. I would assume that the programmer and or the chip should have some protection against writing too much, tr trying to write to memory addresses that don't exist on the chip. Well, hi, Paul. Thanks for joining. Programming, programming. Verifying. Succeeded. Pop the chip out. Next one goes in. Drive you three. Can show off the programmer for a bit. Succeeded. And final chip. Rome Drive Four. Okay, that seems to have been successful. Now let's see what our SE30 thinks of, uh, of this code. Will it be able to uh, execute it? Okay, they're all back in the ROM sim. ROM goes in, I'm gonna listen to the chime. We got, a, we got a good chime. Oh, and we have a, a gray screen. Okay, cool. So <laughs> we inadvertently got, went down the path of a um, ROM drive. I think you have to use a key, keyboard command to, uh, to boot from the uh, ROM drive. It's like command shift X O or whatever. I forgot. I wonder if there's something on that web page. Um, and holding down the R key on boots. Okay. Um, so maybe this is, let's turn this off. A moment. 
I don't really have great bench space for this kind of shenanigans. I'll just put the keyboard over here, the mouse that's hanging up over here. <clears throat> we'll uh, hook up. Oh, where's the ADB? It's down there. Press R. Yep. Rominator uses R. Yeah, and I think Rominator is based on the code that this guy wrote. So I'm gonna switch to the fancy camera for this. Let's uh, see if we can get. Mac Classic, just Command Option XO. Okay. All right. So let's see. So hold down R, turn on. So much glare. Holding down R. Oh, cool. It works. Woo. It boots. <laughs> that's not what I intended to do today, but that's super cool. Can we get better? Uh... You see what's on the screen? No, it's fuzzy. It's out of focus. And yeah, we have 131 megabytes of memory. So that's cool. Um, let's see if uh, let's see what the Micron card thinks about this. Micron card. Okay, I have manual focus. Gonna pop this in here. So uh, Bolly suggested that the micron card may be unhappy if you um, uh, don't hook up the the header connector to the um, get some kind of loop back with the um, uh, the video connector. So you you need to have connected one of these two for it to work properly. Um, so but we can at least try this first and see what happens. Nope. That's a that's a sad Mac. Very sad Mac. Uh, or the sad chime. So this hacked ROM has the exact same problem as uh, the uh, the other hack ROM, <laughs> in that the micron card doesn't like whatever is happening with the. Um, um, the checksum, probably. Or we should probably, yeah, before we give up, we should hook up this uh, header. But it's pretty cool that we were able to actually uh, basically make, make our own uh, Rominator <laughs> that easily. All you need is uh, a Maxim PCB and um, uh, these these chips M twenty nine F 040 by ST Micro. I got the I got ten of them for eighteen dollars or something on eBay. Not too bad. And uh, so yeah, you can make two Maxims with that. Or two two semi romulators. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna see if I can uh, connect. 
Mm, no. Now we can reach. I think that should be enough for testing. So the display, the D sub 25, no, sorry, D sub 15 uh, header is, is connected. I don't think this will make a difference, but we'll see. I'm listening for, listen for the chime. Power. <clears throat> nope. Sad micron card. So I think that one last thing I want to try is see if we can reverse the um, uh, the checksum mod on the image that we had there. If we can find the right offset, so let's take out the maxim again. Uh, I want to make a new ROM disk that has first aid 8.0 on it. There's a drive setup, but no disk first aid on the Rominator stock one. That's the most useful thing to have. Sounds very useful. And um, with this process, you can. Uh, the, um, the website does talk about how to make your own disk image. It says to use your own 1.5 megabyte disk image with the driver, you create one. Um, and yeah, it should be correct with a desktop file, window positioning, yada yada. Then you append it to the modified ROM uh, with CAT, for instance. CAT, by the way, is a, that's a, like a Linux, Linux Unix command to concatenate um, streams. Super handy. So yeah, last try here. I'm gonna open up the image file. So we, what we want to do is to restore the checksum. So what they did to remove the checksum is to they replaced offset 464E2, so from here, to 464EB with no op. So we just need to bring that, that code back, basically, as I understand it. So let's see if we can, if, I'm assuming that the offsets sit on the same, same addresses, or the offsets are in, sorry, the same data is in the same, same offsets, and that the, you know, all the stuff down here, all the binary code down here, that's the disk image data. So four, six, four, two, four. I think a, a better hex editor would have like a jump to off offset base. No. Jump to offset type thing. I don't think it has jump to offset. Or maybe we can, excuse me, <coughs> nope, nope. 4, 
to yeah so here are all the no-ops no-ops are the uh, 4E71, yeah, 4E71, 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 yeah, 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 4E71. Yeah, until, until OB. So this stuff, we just need to restore that code. So it should be 4EFA. 4EFA 0586 0586 4A4A86 4A86 Six six zero two six three two six three zero two six three zero and I think the clear is four four two four seven yeah they are still there okay. Uh, so I think we restored, let's double check the values, 4EFA0586, a 2630. Okay, I think that's correct. Um, so ROM drive, uh, And then we bring this over to here. Yes. Then we go to the Linux subsystem bash. First one, Rome Drive back. Um, so part zero is U4, part one is U3, part two is U2, part three is U1. them back to the Windows file system and one last round of programming let's just show off the bench now so yep as before we remove these chips we program them, program them and see what happens so yeah since we're both so what this is doing is Restoring the 2SI checksum check, which may or may not be a good good thing. That may trip up the computer altogether. It's working so uh, yes I fully expect the uh, the sad chime with that um, can we um, is this checksum represented somewhere in the hex code where is the 
Okay, I'm losing, losing focus. Oh, here it is. Can we find this checksum? No, it's not. Interesting. Mm, hex value. So the checksum itself is not represented in the. Uh, the code succeeded There. Program. Hmm. Yeah, because I, I, what I was getting at was so this talks about how to um, set the ROM checksum to arbitrary values. But it doesn't really talk about how to how to achieve that. So that may I may need a little bit more research there. Let's load number three program. <clears throat> the checksum itself three six B seven F B six C Oh uh for uh, all yeah all. yeah the checksum itself is not re represented in the code. Program. Is this check some representing the code? <laughs> Seems unlikely. It's not a text string. This is clearly a hex, a hex number, hexadecimal, nope. integer, floating point, search all of them. Anyways. See what happens. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not holding out hope for any positive outcomes. So now, now the ROM check should be back. Yeah, that's just instant sad Mac chime. So it doesn't like um, when the uh, check some. I mean, there's a chance that I made a mistake with reversing the check some check there. So 
for the quick look, let's look at some other. I'm just curious if, if we can see the checksum verbatim in any of the um, classic Mac ROMs. So if you look at the, I don't know, Mac SE ROM, does this checksum exist as it were? Oh yeah. The, it, it does, okay, the, the checksum is, unless this is a uh, complete fluke, the checksum is the very first byte. Let's see if we see the same pattern elsewhere. Um, like the Mac portable. Uh, if they even have it here. No, they don't. Uh, let's take the Mac Plus. Mac Plus. We don't know which version. Forty one. F eight one. So it is. That's different. Let's check. Version two. That's also different. Version three. Forty one F eight one seventy. Okay. So this is the checksum for v3 of the Mac Plus. Uh, let's test a later one just for fun, so the LC3, say. LC3. Oh, sorry. Um, how large is it? One meg. LC3. ECBBC41C. ECBBC41C. Okay. Okay, cool. So that's what we should have expected. So the checksum is the first four bytes. Um, uh, let's check the stock 2SI. Mm. Unhacked 2SI. 36B4FBC6. Or 6C. 3B. Uh, 36B7. FB six C. Yep. Cool. So what they changed that in the hacked one? Mm. If we open up this one, three six ninety three E. Yeah, it's different. That's weird. Hmm, interesting. So shall we try and just, just, um, do you want to start with the 2SI? Let's just let's start with the 2SI. Uh, check some. Can we just copy paste that in there? Uh, actually, let's open the hacked one. Like so. Changes the file size. That, that's no, we don't want to do that. So three six um, B seven B seven F B six C. So now the checksum should match um, the two S I. Uh, this one. So let's bring this over to here and replace the one we have, and then we remove these, and then we redo the process. back place please okay so just to take stock uh, we've restored the, 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 the checksum check code we brought the 2SI checksum checksum <laughs> into the very the first four bytes or well, eight bytes um, 
bytes, bits, bits um, of the ROM. So the checksum code should pass now, maybe, probably. Um, where did the maxim go? Oh, it's in the computer, of course. <laughs> yeah, let's try it. So maybe this is this is our last last hurrah. Let's see uh, <laughs> if this does. Oh, jeez. So tedious. Especially the, the large... Start with you up. Program, please. Chip number one done. Chip number two. Programming flash. Very fine. Might be it's actually would have been faster to test this theory using a non-hacked or rather the version of this that doesn't have the disk image. Last chip. What do you for programming? And done. Okay. Just make sure we put all the chips in the right, the right way. So what are the chances? <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, let's listen. Nope. Uh, bummer, bummer, bummer. Um, does not, does not like it. Um, just, nah. I, why? <laughs> uh, why doesn't it like that? What is the checksum code expecting? Is 
this is <clears throat> um, I suppose true checksum code, of course, would run a checksum on the entire binary code and then give us a checksum. That I mean, that's, that's the theory behind the checksum, right? That, um, or that that's how you validate the integrity of a piece of code or a piece of data. Um, but I think in this case, what Apple has done is to pre-generate the checksum and then have a um, have that hard coded in the first eight bits uh, of the wrong code. Yeah, that that's that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I was talking about. Um, but I think it's kind of a one-time calculation uh, that is then put uh, at the head of the uh, the data, um, and that page talked about impersonating other machines by passing arbitrary checksums to a check checksum check um, and that's what Bolly said as well that that was his expectation that you could basically tell the machine whatever you know say hi hey I'm a power Mac 8600 um, or hey I'm a Macintosh plus so I have this checksum um, but Something, something's up. Well, it's my theory. Could be wrong. Hmm. Thinking, thinking. What could we have done differently? Oh, by the way, we, 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 we kind of validated because we validated the theory because the checksums that are documented in, well, it's, it's a theory based on third party information, but, but we, we have that correlation between the recorded checksums um, on that page. This page here, ROM checksum. So this lined up perfectly with which with the first eight bits on the um, on the ROMs. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, I'm not sure why the 2SI, the stock 2SI ROM didn't work. That's a weird one. What could be different about this machine? I don't know if it's the RAM. There's nothing else. This machine is stock otherwise, there's no modification to it if it's doing some kind of hardware check. Just gonna have a quick look at the, uh, uh, the boot disk hacks. Run test checksum. Uh, so this is what this page says. The first seven, uh, first four bytes of the ROM, four bytes. All right. So each each of these pairs is one byte. Um, the hex hex number pair. Uh, each the first four bytes of the ROM contain a checksum of the entire image. Uh, can disable it, makes the work easier. Some days, tar accelerators key off the wrong checksum. 
being able to set the realm checksum to arbitrary values to alter the behavior of these peripherals can be useful. Oh, so maybe maybe we can dis if we huh yeah maybe one last test then because we saw that the checksum was weird in those hacked images that we had there. So maybe if we um, put like the SC30 checksum <laughs> on one of those, it's, it's worth it. Worth the test. I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna try that. I'm gonna use one of the um, the small Im the smaller images. So we have this um, version of the hacked 2SI. Um, image, but without the the ROM image. One last test. So let's open that up. Uh, this one, plain five twelve K image. So let's let's put the SC thirty checksum there. <laughs> uh, this is. Now we're probably ha pro now we are properly hacking. This is hacking. Um, by the way, is this uh, let's three six nine D three six nine D? No, it's not on this. I mean, it could just be a variant of the two SI checksum. I suppose that's not documented here. Um, but let's see if, what happens if we impersonate the SC30 here. 221136. And we, we leave the checksum check off. We don't care about that right now. Let's say that uh, no sum SC30. And then we pull. This one over here. Uh, four pieces, P zero, P zero four. Piece one is U three. Piece two is U two. Piece one is U three. Oh crap! Uh, so I, of course, I over overwrote. I think it's these ones that we just made. I renamed this. Um, Side SC30. So now we have our Frankenstein's ROM image here. It's the small one, so it shouldn't take as long to program. I'm starting from U4 now. So this is what happens with PLCC chips. You put them in a little bit at an angle and then they just, they're not happy. Oh, there we go. Succeeded. You 
three. Oops. Program. By the way, it's funny. I did notice that when it's uh, programming here, and this this was maybe I could have noticed that, but when you get a twenty five percent, it just skips the rest, right? So it, that's another clear sign that you know we're only using one fourth of the storage area when we are writing one hundred and twenty eight kilobytes images. U2, the rock band from Ireland, Bono. Success. No, peace, program, program. How is this? <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just flailing, in the, flailing in the dark here. It feels like the chance of this working is fairly slim. Well, it should work by itself. So we have Happy Mac. Um, it's kind of hard to see the screen. Yeah, but that's that's a functioning Mac. Let's see if we uh, what happens when we hook up the Micron card. <laughs> yeah, I hope I'm providing some some kind of entertainment. Damn it! Sorry, swearing on stream. Uh, yeah. It's not. Doesn't. It doesn't like it. So what is the? What is the micro card? Why doesn't it like this? So the check. Check some check is gone. We're using the. SC30 checksum. I guess we should have tested that the non. Uh, oh, yeah, the card works perfectly um, as long as you're using a stock SC30 ROM. It's just, it doesn't like when you use. 2SI ROM or hacked 2SI ROM, um, aka the 32-bit uh, clean ROM. So yeah, I may, I may, I may call it here. I mean, it's not the end of the world if we end up having uh, to use mode 32 to get access to all our memory. I mean, 24 bit, 24 bit ROM is, has its pros. You, you get better compatibility with really old, weird software uh, that don't like 32 bits uh, addressing. Um, yeah, well, so the, the weird thing is that the machine doesn't work at all with the stock 2SI ROM. But it works with the hacked 2SI ROMs that we get off of um, this website. So there's some hack there that makes it work. Could be the check some check, maybe. Um. Yeah, the, the RAM test is a problem.
but yeah, I much prefer to have the Micron card working um, than having a 32-bit clean ROM right now. Um, so I think I'm I'm okay with that. It's a bummer that you know it's hard when this is the Micron card is just a black box. I don't think. We, maybe for fun, we, should we um, should we read the ROM? <laughs> let's let's read the Micron ROM in our programmer just to, to look at the binary, like look at the code. Um, I'm just gonna pop this out. Hopefully not destroy it. So maybe one way to get the Micron card working with the 32-bit uh, clean setup is to hack the Micron ROM. Problem with these cheap PLCC extractors is that it's very easy to slip and scratch the chips. You don't want to do that. We're just damaging this, uh, not damaging, but scratching. It's weird. It must have been designed for a different kind of tool. I just used a pick instead. So I'll show you the damage that I did, or that the stupid PLCC tool did. So here is the Micron ROM. So see the scratch there? It's pretty nasty. Because uh, the tool can't really grab, fails to grab onto the edge there, and then slips and makes that, that scratch. Poor thing. It says 15, is that, is this, um, is this memory? Is this video RAM? 27C64A, 27C64A. Data sheets. Uh, uh, CMOS EEPROM. package 27C64A. Is that what we need the other... Um, oh yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. This chip is what you need to use the other adapter for. This one. This is a custom special adapter for 2764 and 27C5512. Um, and you have to choose 5 or 3.3 volts supply there. Um, do we know what this one is? So I definitely don't want to break this. I don't want to ruin this super rare chip. C uh, in VCC five volts. B in. So five volts. 
Yep. C must be promised is 65,536 bit 5 volt read only memory. Advanced CMOS circuitry. It says close 5 volts, open 3.3 volts. <laughs> I'm not sure about anything. Everything I read could be wrong. Do we want to risk it? This ultra rare Micron ROM. Let's do it. Uh, ST STS Thompson. Twenty seven six four A. T S. I don't know which is which. Sorry, I was. Um, yeah, I was looking in the uh, programmer. I was searching for the um, device type, and we have two different manufacturers. But I think that doesn't make a difference. But we have the M type and the TS type, which may be like what package difference or something. Data sheet doesn't really talk about it. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna chicken out here because we have two different variants. So the TS variant says VPP voltage is 12 volts and VCC verifies 5 volts. Uh, same. BDD write is 5.5 volts. Pulse delay is 1000 microseconds. 5.5 thousand. Yeah, it seems like the specs are all the same. Nah, you're right, Brandon. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna risk it. For if we had more, um, if we knew that we could have make make use of it, um, I would have done it. But yeah, this is just out of curiosity. Maybe um, okay. I'll ask. I'll ask Bolly if he's um interested. I mean, I mean, he's been he owns these board. He has he, he has some. These boards, he's reversed and reverse engineered them. 
So uh, make sure he's well aware. But yeah, my thinking was that if we, yeah, if we knew, if we could get some insights into how the micron card works by reading ROM, that could perhaps help us why uh, it doesn't like uh, to be together with a um, 2SI uh, hack 2SI ROM. So yeah, it was a bit of a, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, so I'm pretty sure that yeah, if you try to power a 5 volt part with 3.3 .3 volts, you, de you can definitely damage it. Um, that's a very bad idea. Um, so yeah, something is up with um, whatever the ROM on this micro board is. So because we, you know, we get the Happy Mac chime first from the onboard ROM, but then when the micro card ROMs, and this is just theory, like black box theory, but I assume that the micro cards ROM uh, jumps to some other vector and does some other check and then perhaps calls the um, well, I don't know what it does, but it ultimately um, calls the sad Mac chime code. What did they call it? Yeah. So this one, the checksum check here, right? Where it, it runs the startup ROM tests, check the return value, and then L um, L four seven O. That's the error one handler, aka bad chimes. So anyway, I think uh, the positive outcome today is that we can make our own. Uh, oh, sorry, I should switch over to this. Uh, we we can make our own uh, ROM boot disks uh, using this method, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so Brandon, yeah, you can. I, we we can we can look into that if you want to borrow my programmer. Uh, let me know. Um, but that could be a cool little project to do. Um, we still didn't solve the mystery of the Micron card. There may be other revisions. That could be a thing I can ask Bolly if um, um, perhaps we can compare if there are different ROM revisions on his cards and mine to mess around with that for a bit. Um, but yeah, I can only conclude for now that uh, the Micron card ROM is doing some kind of check and trips up when it sees the hack to SI ROM. Um, but yeah, this I think this was a learning experience for me. I, now I know um, how to make my own Maxim ROM, not just Maxim, but you know, <clears throat> the um, uh, SE30 Reloaded as well. Uh, you can get that with, uh, um, you, can, you can put PLCC sockets directly on the SC30 reloaded uh, logic board and then write the ROM images in this fashion that we did today and uh, um, you know you bypass the ROM sim altogether so that's super neat um, but yeah a bummer that we couldn't uh, get the micron card uh, working exactly as we liked so I think off stream I'm now gonna um, just get the um, uh, the ROM disk version of the hacked S2 set 2SI ROM back. Um, oh no, no, sorry, that's not what I was gonna. No, I'm gonna get a. Uh, I think I'm just gonna pop the stock SC30 ROM um, back into this computer, like so, and uh, I'll stick with. Uh, oh, you can see that, but um, it's in there again, and then the background board. Graphics board goes in. Um, so we'll have to rely on mode 32 to access all of the 128 megs of RAM. Um, 
but at least that will allow me to reassemble this machine and go to the next stage of my project for for this machine. It's been such a long journey with the SC30s. It's crazy. I started in November. Um, because the ne next step of the journey, I showed this before, but the next step is to uh, build my own grayscale um, network for this, this computer that goes with the, um, the micron board. And the neck board itself is super simple to build, you just solder on all the components. And um, I did get you uh, old stock. Um, CRT sockets delivered from China, so I don't have to cannibalize a, a original um, neck board. So we don't. This is the so this kind of socket that you need to fit on onto the CRT neck. And the tricky part with this uh, this build is is to create the harness, uh, the cable harness. Um, a lot of cutting of cables and crimping. Stripping and crimping, so that would be fun. Um, but yeah, I'm. I think I'm. I'm. I'm good to move on now. Um, so thank you, everyone, for uh, chiming in, for debating, especially Brandon. Um, and um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, see you next time, and have a great rest of your day. Bye.